Welcome, everyone, to another episode of the Powerhouse Podcast. I am Candy Brown, your host, and let me tell you, I am absolutely thrilled because I have just a phenomenal guest joining me on the show today. And as you know, this is really our space to have those deep, courageous, connected conversations and redefine what leadership really looks like in our world today. And so I hope that you are ready to dig deep, uh, to go into some really big and amazing spaces, because today I have the honor and blessing to have um, Shwami Tirtha with us. Welcome, Shwami. Oh, it's a pleasure and an honor to be on your show, Candy. Oh, thank, thank you. you for being here. And you can already feel his energy. <laughs> and I will tell you, when I first met Swami, we just like, there was just this energy that brought us together and just this immense love. And so I am so delighted and thrilled to be playing in the ring with him today. We are going to go a couple rounds as always. and We're going to get into some really rich and meaty uh, stuff. But before we do that, let me just tell you a little bit about this amazing powerhouse as he is honoring us with his time. Uh, Shwami Tirtha, the orange cowboy, as you can see for those of you that are watching the video, he is gracing us with his beautiful orange cowboy hat is the host of the TV show, Daily Miracles, Healing with Our Angels. He is a number one best-selling author. Speaking clients include the White House Alternative Medicine Commission and John Hopkins University. He has more than four decades teaching wellness and consciousness. At the age of 10, he began having divine experiences that altered his life in divine ways. Swami survived a devastating trage tragedy at the age of 17, by seeking spiritual pathways, which led him to discover his mission of spreading joy. He is sought after by conscious leaders and their teams. How he helps is by strengthening leaders' connection with their angels. And oh, we're going to talk about angels today. I love that. I got chills <laughs> thinking about that. Clients report rediscovering their joy authenticity, and better decision-making opportunities. His mission is to help create world peace. He is targeting his first movie, a comedy about listening to your heart and trusting your authenticity to have global impact. Once again, let me just say welcome and just thank you so much for honoring us today. Welcome joy, to the show. Joy, 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 joy. Thank you for having me. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, let's jump in. Um, you do this amazing work around helping people connect to their angels. And I know that there's probably some people that are like, even tempted to turn off the show and go, uh-oh, we're going to have that conversation. That conversation. <laughs> um, so talk about what that really means. What does it mean? And how does that process work for you to really help people engage and connect into their angels um, right. and what's the magic in that space? Sure, Candy. So first to, to define it is really important. For me, angel is really just a placeholder. You could use the word intuition. You could use the word God. You could use the word spirit. Whatever it is that you tune into for solace, for inspiration, for wisdom, mm. And, and that's what it is. And what I like about the angels, I mean, is that they're so playful and they're so instant. And when they invite us to do something, to step into something, they do all the heavy work. So it really is, as you let off play, when you said, we're going to play today, that's what the angels do. And we have this myth in our culture that life is a struggle and we have to work hard and, and tough it out. And it's really an old paradigm that may have been helpful 100 years ago, but it's really not there. We have technology that leverages us to do all the heavy lifting. So right. why not let's catch our soul, our spirit, our joy back up to the a, a possibility that we can be playful and have, this is an age of celebration, why not? I love that and I love that you talk about this power of play and I know a lot of times and we've spent many even episodes here talking to our audience about the idea of stop adulting so much and it's this level of seriousness and roles yes. and responsibilities and <laughs> when you talk about play what does that mean and what is for someone who maybe has lost that connection to play because yeah. many adults and even some kids now I'm finding oh, yeah. don't really understand that, that power of play. How do you help people tap back into that? And what does that really start to uncover and unfold for them as they do? 
this, this I'm so glad you just went right to the heart of everything, which is play. <clears throat> what if the goal of life is to play? And I mean constructive play. I mean, if I, if I was once in Jamaica, and as I was traveling through the streets, I saw a very impoverished country, uh, tin, tin roofs, tin houses, and I was starting to feel very bad for the people. And then I saw these little children outside playing, and they had more joy in them than I had seen in any child in America. And I said, these kids know what joy is. They just do. And there is a joy when we connect. There, there's another myth that connecting spiritually is serious too, you know. And a lot of conscious thought leaders, people who started off in the world to do good and it was, they were excited, they're burdened now. They're, they're, they're serious now. And we've lost that spark that got us in the, going in the first place. Wow, I could change the world. And I catch myself every so often being too serious. And that's when something screwy happens in my life and makes me <laughs> laugh about myself. <laughs> so play is the work of the day. Nice. And I, and I can so relate to that because I think about sometimes when I'm getting really serious and I catch myself and put myself in that space of consciousness. Right. And then usually it's my joke with my higher power where I'm like, really? Okay, you must be having a slow day today because we're <laughs> testing my patience again, right? <laughs> and so then it's like, how do you lighten up in that space? And so I'm wondering, do you have some techniques or some <clears throat> ways that when people really get stuck in that, how do you help them shift? Because for some people, even the idea of moving into, yeah. as much as they're like, yeah, that sounds nice. And imagine if I could play and I don't have time to play. And mm -hmm. I tell people constantly, I'm like, look, you have two to five minutes a day that you can play. Play your favorite song. Play your favorite bust out a Disney song or a Muppet song. I guarantee mm -hmm. it changes your energy. Absolutely. What are some of the ways that you help people tap back into that or find a, an opening so maybe it's not so daunting right because i think that's where the adulting comes in we think everything's got to be this massive shift massive and it's just tweaks it's like you're saying it's just a tweak and if you know if you're home you can pet your dog you can go step outside in nature or or cat you know or llama whatever you have <laughs> <laughs> i want to pet llama okay i just decided i want to pet in the bucket llama. List oh that would be great what now, now when, I, when I was a child, we <laughs> grew up with instant oatmeal. And now the kids today have grown up with Instagram. So what we were missing and what I've invented <laughs> is instant meditation. Oh, I love and that. If you're in the car, and of course you could listen to your favorite music, but you could do this in the car, you could do this in the office, because if you're at work, you can't go home and pet your cat. You can't sit and meditate for 20 minutes. But I, and I'll show you if you like. We just. I would a, love that because I know for me, I've had to overcome my language around meditation, thinking, "Oh, I don't have twenty minutes. Oh, right. I can't quiet down for that long." And what right. I've learned, and I've talked to people, I said, "I walk and meditate. I do a yes. lot of Beautiful. movement meditation Beautiful. because I have Beautiful. a hard time coming down." So I would love for you to share the fact that you can meditate very quickly. Very quickly in 20 seconds and nobody will even know you're doing it. Let's, let's do it. I love it. I'm so, so game. You could put your hand on your heart and if you have to just pretend there's an itch if you think you're looking uh, <laughs> conspicuous. Think about the person or the, the pet or the place or the music that you love the most. Whatever brings you the most love. And you keep your eyes open if you're driving, please. And if you're driving, probably don't do this. <laughs> do it at a red light. Please, we do not want to be the cause for any more no, no, automobile no. accidents by any means. So put your hand on your heart. Think of that which brings you the most love in your life and take a nice deep breath in and feel your heart expand with the love and the joy as the air comes in. And then as you exhale, just release everything that's not love, and everything that's not you. And now that's it. That's it. I love that. And honestly, I can personally, I feel my eyes water because my, my absolute deepest space of love. And I love that you said, you know, pet your animals. And everyone that knows me knows that my love of my life is my dog, Peyton. Uh, and I do. When I think about, I can almost smell his paws. I can yeah. hear his little snores. And I feel that space. Yes. My eyes water because that's such a deep, connected, spiritual space for me. Absolutely. Um, and, but yeah, and it's just, that power of breath too, right? It's that power of just power breathing breath. in what's abundant, what's clean, what's love, and exhaling out all the crap that we don't need to put 
in our body and keep in us. And, and we're talking, the, for, for those who like still think this is a little woo-woo, let me say, <laughs> this is, everything I've just said is scientifically backed up. There's research on breathing. There is research on Absolutely. how we change our, our brains, neuroscience. And there's also research that just touching your heart calms you down. So, Absolutely. So everything I've just said, there is a plethora of research out there. Yeah, and I we challenge that a lot, Swami, around um, letting go of the notion of woo-woo. I know even in some of the corporate spaces, they'll introduce me and say, this is going to be the soft and fuzzy. And that's the first thing I say is we're going to dispel that myth. Because first of all, it's science and it's physics. It is about your own energy and how energy moves. That's right. And when you understand that, um, I really think it's powerful that people don't realize that we have the ability to ground ourselves, whether it be by touching our heart or you know that's one of the reasons why when people do meditate they take their right. thumb and middle finger because right. it's such a place to ground yourself and get yourself back to a center space to just quiet down that's right. and it's not woo woo to get to a space to quiet down it is a needed neurological that's right that's right the, it, well that, that's the fight or flight we have to break right. that that habit of fight or flight or we'll never calm down and we've exactly. been in it so long, it's locked into place. And then we have to pet our dog or put our hand on our hearts or yeah, things be silly, you know? <laughs> well, exactly. And if you ever notice, I know I've always noticed uh, my dog because we do a whole fight or flight and freeze and kind of open free love space. And we do an exercise sometimes mm -hmm. where there's no words. It's just a matter of can you can feel someone's energy based on what state they're in. Yes. And if you ever notice a child and a dog or any animal, when they come in to give you love, they bring their head and their space and they come right into your heart space. Mm. When they hug you, children come right into your center. Yes. My dog comes in and he'll bow his head yes. and he'll just put his head right into my heart. Mm. And it's such a beautiful place to get grounded. And I think it's interesting that that was one of the things you said, put your hand on your heart. Right. Because I find that most people don't allow themselves to connect from a heart level for themselves. And we have to connect with ourselves. And the first, the first thing, if we were to put a word on it, it's self-worth. Absolutely. Validate ourselves. I love myself. I'm, I'm worthy. I'm worth it. And I would imagine that, and so maybe we talk a little bit about that because I, I think heading into that kind of self-worth space, I think oftentimes, and this is my belief around this, some of that need to create an analogy acknowledgement that it's woo woo is because we're fearful of stepping into that space to say, I deserve that. And so I think some of those affirmations and some of those spaces to open that up, I'd be curious as to one, the power of connecting from a heart space to do that. But what are some of your techniques or some of your ways to help people bridge that gap between that perception around, Oh, it's, I'm going to call it this because it's safer versus allowing myself to step into a place of self-worth. You, you know, uh, what's coming to me, the answer that I'm being asked to share is it's a holistic answer. Because another myth is what's the magic bullet? And I know <laughs> you're, you're not asking that. No. But people have a note. I'm going to do this and then boom, instantly. Right. It's all fixed. <laughs> if we love ourselves, A, we're going to eat healthier foods. Mm -hmm. Even a little bit. Even if, we, for example, you switch from white sugar to whole cane sugar. You do that for a week, you will feel amazingly different. If you switch from white bread to whole wheat bread, same thing. And then, of course, you can go all the way up to fresh fruits and vegetables and whole grains and beans and things like that. But you could just start really small, and the body just takes over. It's an amazing machine. Or maybe it's not a machine. It's an amazing relationship that, that's going on for us. So taking care of our health, walking, uh, everything's a relationship. Let's put it under the umbrella of relationship. Relationship with ourself, relationship with our food, relationship with our body, relationship with nature, relationship with our families and pets, and relationship with the world. What is our calling? You know, if somebody is taking a, a, a on a CEO role, th their vision is how are we going to help the world? Right. So there's that too. But we can't help the world if we're not helping ourselves. If we don't put gas in our car, how are we going to drive to work? Right. 
Well, and there's something to be said for that because, you know, it's interesting. People come and they'll say, are you a life coach? Are you a business coach? Do you know, my answer is always yes. yes. And they say, I don't understand why you can say yes to both. And I said, because no matter what we're looking at, right. more times than not, where your focus is on the symptom, it's not on the, the, the space of where the, the root cause. Exactly. And it always comes back to what's going on here because anything in your business, anything in your relationships – and that, that interconnectedness around everything being a relationship is so powerful, understanding that it's all connected, that it always comes back to you no matter what and how you're caring for yourself and how you're putting yourself in a space to be open for joy and love and health and wellness. Because um, it's interesting to me, you know, we get caught up in this dichotomy of life-work balance. Yes. And there's yes. no such thing. It's your yeah. life. And work is one of those spaces. It's integration. Yeah. It's integration. Somebody said to me, can I put on my, I was talking to you about the holistic hat. Can I put on my business hat? And it's like, why do you have different hats? Aren't you right. just. Right. So. Right. So talk about integration a little bit. I think that's a powerful word. Talk about what that means. Define that a little bit and talk about how we can start looking at a deeper level of integration across the aspects of our life versus trying to have these buckets that we keep thinking, Oh, this is who I am here. This is who I am here. This right. is who I am there. Yeah. And this goes right to your notion of, of, of root cause. Mm -hmm. So if we, the word for integration, the root cause of for integration or the root solution is another big word. And that's authenticity. Mm -hmm. If we are our authentic selves, it's, we found it. It's Eureka. It's, it's the golden goose. It's, it's the paradise. It's everything. And when we are ourselves, we just are ourselves. We're ourselves at work or ourselves at home. Now, you know, at work, we may not, we use our outside voices as our parents used to tell us, <laughs> but we're still ourselves. Right. You know, I wear maybe nicer clothes when I'm working than I am at home, but I'm still me. I don't change who I am. Right. And that, that is the scariest thing to find our authentic self because most people I know, and, and I know other people have not been trained this way, but I know a lot of people is just don't stick out, don't rock the boat. <laughs> and it's like, be, and then they say, don't be, be, be yourself, but, but don't, you know, but be like everybody else. And well, <laughs> how, how, find who you are. You know, if you love dogs, Love dogs, celebrate it, do it, play with them. Yeah. And, and at work, have a picture of your dog, you know, it'll make you feel better. Absolutely. But if we try to, you know, part of it is we're afraid what people are going to say specifically at work. Will we lose some credibility? In the short term, we may, but in the long term, if we change, we lose ourselves. And that's, that's, then we have nothing, you know? Yeah. So. And there's a couple things I want to dig into there. First of all, you and I did not get the memo on we're supposed to like <laughs> play a certain way and not stand out. And we did not get that memo. And by the way, I have never learned my inside voice. I don't think that's <laughs> even a function of what I have. And I, I tell people that even when I'm doing big speaking engagements, when I'm like, you need to stand in your voice loudly and proudly, not quite like me where they can hear me on the other side of the country. <laughs> but it is that space. I don't think I ever learned my outside voice or my inside voice. It's always been just a loud <laughs> projection but what's interesting about that is um, a couple things inside of that absolutely agree with that I think there is the, a lot of fear around a judgment I think that's probably one of the biggest fears and it's where shame shows up and if you I, I'm a big fan of Brene Brown and I love that she talks about you know shame shows up for women as I'm not enough like mm. I'm not pretty enough I'm not um, smart enough. I'm not thin enough. I'm not whatever it is. And it's a comparison of this judgment or this preconceived space. And for men, oftentimes it's, I can't provide enough. I can't provide enough mm. financially. I can't provide enough sexually. I can't provide wow. enough, whatever it is. Yeah. But when I think about that, and I think about this fear that holds a lot of people back from standing in that space to say, look, you're going to be who you are whatever that might be. And, you know, someone like Betty White, who I love her, my quote from her is, someone's opinion of you is none of your damn business. <laughs> um, I love that, yet we still get caught up in that. And the thing that I really want to get into a little bit, because I hear it and I know there's people that are like, yeah, that's the buzz, bingo, business, 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 
bingo buzzword. Man, I can't <laughs> say that today. Is that word authenticity. It feels like it's a word that we have said over and over and over again. And it's almost gotten into a space of being very trite and being very lost on people in terms of what that really means. And I know you kind of alluded to it's being who you are, but I, I, I can actually hear some people right now going, yeah, and Great. I, I get okay. it. And, and it feels like one of those buzzwords that we sure. keep saying yet. I'm not sure if I really know what that means. And so I would love to delve into that a little bit more because I think there's a power when people really understand what you mean when you say authenticity. Okay. The best way I can explain that is to go back to what you were talking earlier. Let's say there's shame or guilt. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's research that shows that people are afraid to be happy and women are more afraid, more guilty in being happy than men even. Absolutely. So let's say you have guilt or shame and we'll do, we're going to do another instant meditation to remove that. And that's what, what this is. So think about your shame or your guilt or whatever your biggest emotional challenges or block and rate it on a scale of one to 10. Think of the last time it really bothered you and got in your way. And the 10 is like unbearable. One is manageable. And when you get that, put your hand on your heart. Think about your dog or think about who you love the most. Take a nice deep breath in and release. Release all that's not you or release all that's not love. And now go back and think about the last time you felt that guilt or shame. And how, do you, how does it make you feel right now? Guarantee you it's at least one point lower, if not eight points or disappeared. Wow. So you are now more yourself. Nice. Okay, so I I agree. Authentic is a is a word. I didn't know it's so buzzword used because I'm not in that loop. Uh, but you, if you feel a little less guilt, you're more yourself. You're more at ease. Yeah. You're more authentic. More okay. authentic would mean then now that somebody's had a little bit of an experience. If you feel like wearing an orange hat, you wear it, you know, um, I don't know, but don't, cause I'm the one who's wearing it. That's my exactly. brand. <laughs> you orange cowboy. Uh, but I mean, that's so true. And, and the fact that you just took us back to a very quick instant meditation again, yeah. I think it's that space of, and, and sometimes I think where we get tripped up is that we try to define. And so I love that you actually kind of took it back and still kept it almost in a open loop kind of space because it's one of those things that it's not necessarily something you need to define in words. Right. It's something you feel and experience. Yes, and it's that space where you can truly quiet down within yourself. Right. It's that, that noise is all around us all the time. It's people's opinions. It's the judgments. I mean, we judge all the time, right? right. Human nature is that we create a judgment instantly when we see people, it's just based on our experiences, our upbringing, what we've learned. And there's a space to realize, and I had a great mentor once tell me, everyone's going to judge you and no one's going to give you the amount of time you think they are when they judge you. Because the first judgment came from their shame, their guilt, their trigger, their something. Right. Then they judged you and the instant they judge you, then it goes back to them and they're right. spinning. So I, it was one of the most freeing things someone said because it was like, if people are going to judge me anyway... That's right. And judge me on my terms and I'm going to have fun with it because if you're going to judge me, I can't control that. It's none of my business and I might as well have fun in the yeah. fact that I can worry about trying to be something I'm not or I can drop in, get quiet and just go, what makes sense to me? What feels good to me? What seems to be an integrity and, and kind of that space that just always lights me up? And if you like it, great. If you don't, great. And at the same time, I don't have to worry about it anymore. And it was one of the most freeing things I ever did. I think, Candy, the other thing, the other myth that we're sort of just starting to touch on is the, the unspoken belief that who I am is in a box because we're yeah. always put in boxes. And I have to say, it's my experience that I am always changing because I'm always learning I'm always growing. I'm always testing my boundaries. I'm always seeing what more I can become. I'm always challenging my limited beliefs. And so even people who judge me because they like me, I find after a while as I grow, they get upset. Don't do that because that's not you anymore. So people, I don't want people to judge me to like me or not like me. So it's a lot easier to stop right. thinking what people care about. 
Well, and how powerful and beautiful is that to put ourselves in a space to realize that we are dynamic beings. Yeah. We do not have to. It's one of those spaces when people are like, well, I couldn't do that. You can as soon as you say, I choose to reinvent myself and play in this space instead. Yeah. We get the opportunity as long as we have that fire in our belly and that breath in our lungs, we can reinvent, we can try on, we can open up, we can step into new spaces at any time. And so I love that you gave us permission, so to speak, even though that's our own, you know, we get to do that to say it's very dynamic. It's fluid. It can move and change. And it's a matter of what feels good for you. It's not a matter of what everyone else is comfortable with. And so to like completely acknowledge that there are no boxes right. and you have that freedom to step out of that. And so Swami, that actually leads me to this space where we've been playing all year long. It's uh, right. this whole release around changing your what if, which oftentimes can be that very negative anchoring sky is falling. What if this happens? What if I can't do this? What if I fail <laughs> into a space where we start really thinking about a more powerful, purposeful, imaginative. Mm -hmm. And I know, I mean, you've done this for four decades. You've had such an amazing, beautiful journey. You've been standing in this place of really working with conscious leaders and, you know, having them step into that joy and authenticity. But when you start thinking about your big imaginative, when you mm -hmm. think about where it gets really exciting and maybe even a little scary, what starts to open up for you as you're like, man, I want to dance there and when I think about imagine if this is what you see for yourself for the world or the space that you're playing in what does that look like yeah so the first thing I just a, a quick thing about so people think well how come this guy's always happy he must have had a good life when I was a kid I used to have dreams that my parents were going to be separated from me mm -hmm. and 10 years later they were in a car crash and died and that after the grief I said how did I know that? Who told me that? And I jumped into the spiritual to mm -hmm. investigate it. And, you know, they say the seed of tragedy, there's a greater benefit. And for me, it was forcing me to become more inner looking, meditative. Uh, the deeper the tragedy, the more it forced me to be in joy or else the what ifs would have just been a tsunami and wiped me right. out. Right. So nowadays, the greatest thing, and this comes right back to the angels, it's like music. Music expresses so much more than words do. And so I have a game called Let's Pretend. And you sit with your angels and you just pretend, whatever it is. And you just say, oh, so uh, let's pretend that I buy a, a giant place and I bring in all these rescue dogs mm -hmm. and... And people, and I create a little park where people come with their, whatever you pretend. The next thing you know, people start coming to you on the street saying, hey, you know, uh, I don't know why I'm asking you this, but would you like, I'd like to donate money to, to create a dog park. This, and this literally happened to one of my clients the other day. Not dog park. I use dog park for you. I know, and I love that he's speaking my language. <laughs> I, love, I love people that get me. Anyone that knows that knows that dogs are my whole, yes. <laughs> so pretend, play the game of pretend because it's, it's fun and it puts us in that childlike. And, and all the ancient cultures have told us, the shamans have told us that, that dream your dreams into reality. Mm -hmm. and, and, and CEOs know this. You have a vision, then you have to communicate it to your team. Right. It's a dream you have. It's a vision you have. And the greatest leaders, Steve Jobs says in that famous iconic commercial, the lead, those who are crazy enough to think they can change the world are the ones that do. Yeah, right. So play the pretend game. I love that because we, we talk about it, you know, make believe. Remember when you were a kid and we would sit and I had a roommate and I, we would do that in college. Although she'd always fall asleep before me, but we would be like, make believe. So imagine if you had a million dollars tomorrow, what would you do with it? Imagine if you could travel. And it's amazing that we do that so audaciously and so openly as children. Yes. And then somewhere in our childhood, we start to adult too soon and we start to put all those limits and those barriers and those boxes and constraints and whatever. And the magic happens in that space of, are you giving yourself time to dream, to daydream, to plant those seeds, right. to play with it, to visualize it into something that you can actually feel and experience and bring it in as if it's already here for you yes. Yes. because it is. And it, yeah. it's so powerful. And I love that you say it. it's amazing how all of a sudden someone's offering you money to do this. And you're like, how did that happen? Because That's we it. get so locked up in how something happens, why something happens 
happens or when something's going to happen. Right. When I tell people, I'm like, the biggest question you can ask is, am I opening up access in every way possible to right. receive what's already mine to have? But right. you got to create that dream, right? And I love that you're like, let's pretend. Let's, let's pretend. And so I challenge all of you. I invite all of you that are listening to give yourself two, 20 seconds. 20 seconds. minutes, five <laughs> minutes to play Let's Pretend. Put on some music. And I'm a big fan of one of the reasons I love jazz so much and classical music is yeah. because especially music without words has mm -hmm. an an incredible ability to evoke emotion that we have not your, learned how to create the right frame from a language perspective, but we know it, we feel it, it's very visceral, mm -hmm. and you can feel very connected. So I'm a huge fan of inviting music in to open up that space to get um, So many connected. simple ways that nobody, we won't call attention to ourselves. Yeah. yeah, it's wonderful. Mm -hmm. So Swami, before I forget, um, because I know there's some people that are just like, I want to know more about how to connect into my angels and I want to know <laughs> what more that looks like and how do they get a hold of you? How, what's the best way that they can play with you and, and be in a space to learn more? Sure. So they can, if they do go to my website called Orange Cowboy, orange like the color, cowboy like the hat, uh, orangecowboy.com. I actually have a free gift right there. It's a Tibetan bowl meditation sound bath. Ooh. Love that. And you just download it, sign up, download it, and it washes everything away from you. Oh, I'm going to take that on today. I love that. I do take a few one-on-one -on -one clients a year. Really what I'm focusing on is getting my TV show out there, which shows you how to do this. And hopefully you'll be a guest on my show. Oh, I can't wait. I can't we wait. We play Make Pretend, and it goes around the world to 160 some odd countries and so that's how I can, you know, that was my big imagine. How can I re get this message of divinity, of love, of joy out to the world? I'm just one person. And the answer was through the, the leverage of television and films. I have wow. a screenplay also that's turned, being turned into a movie. Just so. beautiful. And yes, I absolutely would love to play in that space. And I know we've talked about that. I just, I think that's incredible. And to actually be able to engage in that in the moment, simple, just like what you've done with the two meditations that we've done here. Exactly. That's what um, we do. Powerful. So yes, um, absolutely. And, you know, as we're kind of closing things out, what a beautiful conversation. And I just, your spirit, your energy, everything about you is just, it just exudes such love such divinity and just this grace that, like I said, the minute we met, I have been just so deeply in love with you. And I just think you are such a beautiful being. So I so honor and thank you for being here um, from the depths of my soul. <laughs> and same thing. I just, you're, you're doing amazing work. I fell in love with you instantly. As soon as you said, there is no woo woo in business. <laughs> there is none. Business. <laughs> yes, there is no woo woo. It's just a mindset people have. And I, all that stuff you think is woo woo is exactly what we need to connect to. Cause it's the stuff that really opens us wide open and, Oh, it's just, that's where the magic is. And I'm all about playing in some magic. And yeah, so, really. As we're bringing this to a close, and uh, we'll have to have you come back and play with us some more, sure. um, what's something you would love to leave our audience with? What's a, a thought or a way that you want to bring this together? Um, how would you yeah. like to, what's one thing you'd like to leave us with? I think a, a common term, a common notion is put your, have, imagine something, visualize something. And so what I'm being reminded of is imagine an angel. Imagine some light, some white light pillar. Imagine something divine that just brings you joy and, and, and upliftment. And just as long as you can hold that in your mind, even for a few seconds, it, you'll, you'll become aligned with it. And I can't, you know, what is the highest thing? If you, how do you imagine God? That's kind of hard. You know, maybe Jesus, maybe Buddha, or just light or an angelic. Put that in your mind and it's changing you and you're there, you know, get to the goal. I'm a big one of get to the goal now and then we'll live in paradise. <laughs> Absolutely. And uh, for any of you that actually were taking that on as he was saying that, I'm sensing you feel lighter. I know even in this space that we've been playing, all of a sudden I'm like, ooh. And that white light for me is so powerful because uh, it actually is what my name means. Candace means white shimmering light. Wow. And when I meditate or when I do energy healings, it's the thing that, 
tends to show up and surround me. So I love that because it is a space that instantly I feel like I've been lifted and instantly. So yeah. find your, and I won't call it an anchor point because that sounds heavy. Find your focal point right. so that you can create that space to get connected and grounded and allow yourself to lift up in that, that connectedness. And so, again, just really such deep honor and gratitude for my guest, Swami, showing up today. He is the orange cowboy. He is fantastic. And know that this is just another way that we're experiencing how you can truly say yes to yourself. When we talk about that authenticity, it's about you getting to know you and saying yes to you in a way that you can destroy the noise that's around you, that you can quiet that down so that you can stand in a place to be the leader that you choose to be. Because as we've always discussed, leadership truly is a choice. It's a choice in how you choose to show up. It's a choice in how you choose to serve others. And it's a choice in how you choose to take personal responsibility inside those two spaces. And so this is some more tools for you to stand powerfully in that space. So with that, I hope all of you go out there and leave your mark, leave your living legacy. And thank you for joining us today. Thank you to my beautiful and gracious guest. Uh, it has been an honor. Please subscribe so that you do not miss an episode of these amazing conversations we're having with global thought leaders. Uh, just know that I'm sending you all heart to heart hugs and that I love you and we're here. Uh, we'll talk to you next time. Thank you, everyone.